starts at 12. The night beat starts right now. The cases of COVID-19 growing in Bear County. San Antonio Metro Health confirming cases more than doubled since our last newscast. There are now 11 confirmed cases in the county. Here's how those numbers break down of the confirmed cases. Four are travel related, four are close contacts of the travel related cases, and three cases are still under investigation, which means it is unclear how these cases were contracted. So as of right now, there are still no confirmed community spread cases of the virus. Social distancing is still being recommended. Meanwhile, the Bear County Sheriff's Office also sharing some new information tonight. They confirm an inmate with flu like symptoms placed in a negative pressure cell. This is at least the second inmate to go through this procedure of isolation. In a statement, the Sheriff's Office says, quote, current indications are the inmate may have something as simple as the common cold. However, in an abundance of caution, this inmate has been tested for other illnesses one of which is COVID-19. Test results are pending, end quote. And in Texas, we have had our second death. The first was a man in his 90s in Matagorda County. And tonight, Tarrant County now confirming the second death. The public health department there tweeting this evening that a senior citizen died on Sunday as a result of the illness. That person was a resident of the Texas Masonic Retirement Center in Arlington and a lot of coronavirus concerns are dropping on them. Primary care physicians have been have, have become part of the front line of defense during this coronavirus pandemic. But who's helping doctors? One primary care physician tells the night team's Patty Santos doctors across the area are in desperate need of support. In my 25 years of practicing medicine, I have not seen anything like this, and we have not even gotten close to the peak. Dr. Sally Jafar says daily calls to his office have more than doubled. His practice cares for 9,000 patients, but he wonders for how much longer. We have one box of masks in our clinic, and I think it has like 20 or 30 masks. So imagine, and we see 100 patients a day. Number one problem, medical supplies are running low. He says he's been calling hospitals, Metro Health and other providers for help, but shields, gowns and other medical supplies are scarce. We need help from the state. We need help from the governor. We need help from the hospitals that have a lot of this equipment. We need help from the suppliers because we have doctors out there who their suppliers can't even tell them when the equipment will be available. Dr. David Flieger with the Texas Medical Association says it's a problem statewide and so is keeping track of information that's constantly changing. We need them to reach out to us because obviously there's the tens of thousands of them. Uh, but we have that information available. Jafar says more needs to be done locally to coordinate supplies, protocols and guidelines. I just think the first line of defense need to be supported a little bit more so they don't those patients don't have to go any further than us and their home. His office has started seeing patients in their vehicles to protect staff and supplies. Metro Health says it's up to each individual provider to figure out how to get their own supplies. They do have a phone number for medical professionals, but some of the medical staff says that number goes to a voicemail and sometimes that voicemail is full. That was Patty Santos reporting. So with all that in mind, how has the San Antonio and South Texas medical response been to the coronavirus crisis? It's a question I posed to infectious disease doctor Ruth Bergeron from UT Health San Antonio during the KSAT News at 9 tonight. After she answered KSAT viewer questions, she talked about how the medical community has been answering the call. I'm pleased and proud of the response that I've seen uh, with San Antonio at governmental levels um, and with the emergency response team. We also talked about testing. Is COVID-19 airborne? How long can it live on surfaces? And many more questions our viewers have. It's something we will do every night during KSAT News at 9. You can see it on our website and streaming at 9 o'clock every weeknight. Tomorrow night, County Judge Nelson Wolf is scheduled to be our guest. Well, they have adjusted store hours and increased sanitation. And now HEB is moving to add sneeze guards at their registers to keep customers and staff protected. HEB also wants to remind you not to make panic purchases. They also say just because what you're looking for may not be there right now, 
It doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. Customers may see that shelves are empty. It's not because we don't have the product. It's because our trucks are trying to get to the store as fast as, as customers are purchasing. So one thing we love to remind customers is there's no need to panic buy. We are here for the long term. Our supply chain is strong. Um, really, it's just a matter of us keeping up with the demand inside the stores. So we encourage customers shop like you would for your daily routine. We have more information about the extra precautions HEB and other retail chains are taking posted on our website right now, ksat.com. Several school districts are adding two more weeks to their closures. San Antonio ISD, East Central ISD, Northeast ISD, and Northside ISD are some of the districts now expected to stay closed through at least April 3rd. The news comes as a push for social distancing continues. More districts are expected to make similar announcements and we're updating the list always online. With Bear County schools having to extend school closures, there are fears over whether employees will get paid. The Southwest Independent School District passing a resolution to make sure their employees are still getting paid during this time. The night team's Jaffney Gray explains how they plan to do that. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. The Southwest Independent School District School Board passed a resolution tonight that allows the superintendent to pay hourly and salary employees during the closure of their schools. That closure has been extended through April 3rd. There is a great opportunity. We may have to go beyond that as well uh, as we learn more about what's happening uh, with the virus and with the pandemic. Superintendent Lloyd Verstuff says it is important that all of their employees, which include teachers, bus drivers, maintenance workers, and more, get their paychecks, which was already a part of their district's budget. We may have this interruption in our lives, but it doesn't mean that uh, our employees still don't have obligations. Uh, they still don't have bills coming in. Verstuff says he's anticipating more recommendations that could possibly push the return of students in classrooms to six to eight more weeks, which he says gives them an opportunity to hone in on their digital education. You know, we're standing up curbside food service. We're, we're standing up uh, kind of a, a low tech, high tech uh, instructional delivery that we did not have. Uh, so there's some associated costs with those. He says the most important thing is that the school districts stick together during the pandemic. I think as long as we, we make sure that uh, student safety and well-being is always first and foremost, uh, we can work through the rest of it. Jamney Gray, KSAT 12 News. The coronavirus has spurred questions about health, education, and emergency management. On Thursday night, Governor Abbott is set to hold a virtual town hall beginning at 7 o'clock. So this is your chance to ask the governor a question. You can submit one on social media, in writing, or on video for 20 seconds or less. You can watch the town hall on KSAT and KSAT.com, which is partnering with Nexstar Media Group to broadcast this important discussion. It'll be shown statewide on TV and then also streamed live on more than a dozen websites in different media markets. Use the hashtag AskAbbott to send us your questions by 5 p.m. tomorrow. We do prefer video, by the way. And be sure to join us for State of Texas Coronavirus Update, a virtual town hall with Governor Abbott. Again, it's happening on Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m. here on KSAT 12 and streaming live on our website at KSAT.com. Well, being told to stay home has become a message for many of us, but what about the people who don't have homes? Churches and nonprofits across the country spending their time serving the homeless. The night team's Courtney Friedman shows us how volunteers are educating those without homes about COVID-19 and social distancing. Services inside the church may have stopped, but the mission continues on the streets. Normally the church uh, serves around 400 to 600 homeless a week. Uh, through medical clinics, through hot meals, uh, clothes, uh, showers. Uh, and so we, have a, we serve mainly a downtown population. Travis Park Church pastor Gavin Rogers says he cannot let those people down. So he and his volunteers are finding creative ways to continue giving. How do we address getting a large volume of people a meal? quickly and efficiently. John Chadwell is the chef and kitchen manager for Travis Park Church's Corazon Ministry. Today he found a way to feed hot food to hundreds, 
while complying with social distancing and CDC recommendations. The best analogy I can have is like an ice cream truck. We're going to a park for a little bit, handing out some food, going to another park for a little bit, handing out food, checking on folks. We've got a good partnership with uh, Centro and Block by Block and those guys working together uh, uh, to help us social distance folks, but also get a, a wellness check. How are people doing? Pastor Rogers says the homeless community has done a great job of splitting up at separate parks so they aren't crowded together receiving services. Selfless work just like this happening across the city. Here on the west side, volunteers at Last Chance Ministries sanitize the entire building while feeding the homeless outside and talking to them about social distancing and symptoms of the virus. I even see our homeless serving each other, getting meals for one another. Uh, and so uh, the people are going to step up because we're, we're a great city. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Organizers are letting the homeless know where they'll be. Pastor Rogers and Chef Chadwell will be passing out hot food all over again tomorrow evening at different parks and bridges in the downtown area. New on the night beat, a part of our KSAT team stuck more than 5,000 miles away from San Antonio. Sebastian Hovell is part of our tech team and was ready to return after visiting family in Argentina. During his visit, though, flight restrictions were implemented and a self quarantine was mandated for travelers. Sebastian arrived in Rosario, Argentina on the 10th. It's hoping to finish his self quarantine by Monday, but it's unclear when flights out of Argentina will actually resume. Sebastian has been living each day in a room painted purple and pink, a room meant for his cousin's daughter. Well, it's now used to protect him from others. He says he hasn't shown any symptoms, but he definitely wants to be sure. I'm here, you know, I'm doing my best to try to try to ride this through. You know, there's some some days that are more emotional than the others because you kind of miss the people that you want to be around with. But, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to hang in there. Sebastian originally scheduled to fly back today before those restrictions were imposed. And while in quarantine, he gets food passed to him through a window. He can only leave the room to use the restroom and the shower. He also says just this past Sunday, a 10 day lockdown was announced for the entire country of Argentina, with the exception of essential services like grocery stores and pharmacies. Well, here at home, the goal is to have enough food or enough blood, that is, for a pandemic. Donations of 600 pints of blood can help us get there. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is holding blood drives by appointment through Wednesday at the, e Wednesday at the Alamo Dome. We have information on our website at ksat.com. It's still ahead on the night beat stocks, seeing a change after a new announcement within the Trump administration. The plan the president wants Congress to make happen coming up. And advice from the other side of the world, what a local woman who now lives in South Korea wants you to know during this coronavirus pandemic. It's coming up next on The Night Beat. Panicking is not good. You should be concerned, absolutely. You should be taking precautions. You should be distancing yourself from people. You should not be going outside unless you absolutely have to. It is advice coming from the other side of the world. A woman who used to live in Universal City is now teaching abroad. Brayden House lives in South Korea, where more than 8,300 cases of COVID-19 have been reported. Brayden graduated from Judson High School before moving to South Korea in 2017. She teaches English at an after-school academy, which has trans transitioned to video classes. While Brayden says she's nervous about the current situation, she feels the government is being being transparent. She's also using an app dedicated to tracking people who tested positive for the coronavirus. Through interviews, eyewitness accounts, uh, CCTV cameras, and credit card transactions, they will basically, uh, from the time that they've been diagnosed, they will trace back to when they were infected. And in the time span between that, they will find where the person was, when were they there, now, the U.S. is using different measures during this pandemic, but Brayden says we should continue to listen to health officials about social distancing and washing our hands. Back here at home, the stock market rebounding after the Trump administration outlined measures to combat the coronavirus economic fallout. President Donald Trump unveiling a trillion dollar stimulus plan to boost the economy. One big part of that plan, direct cash payments to Americans. 
checks possibly sent in the next two weeks. The plan would also include a payroll tax cut, but would still have to be approved by Congress. The Senate currently taking up another relief bill that passed the House last week. All 50 states now have a case of the coronavirus, and some cities and states have mandated curfew and potential shelter in place orders. You can catch up on all the latest updates on our website, ksat.com. And of course, we're still monitoring and updating our list of closures. It's all on our homepage at ksat.com. Turning now to live cam, giving you a shot of the Alamo Dome tonight as we sit at 74 degrees. Adam? And it's quiet around town right now. You know, we don't really have any activity on the radar screen here locally, but you can see it over my shoulder. Yeah, we do have some thunderstorm activity off to the west of us right now, and that's what we anticipated by this time in the night that we'd have some storms developing and a line coming together, and that's what we're seeing. Now, out ahead of it, we have a few little showers that have decided to pop up and a little thunderstorm as well. We're looking at Bandera County moving toward Kerr County, but indications are that this little thunder shower is starting to fall apart a bit. Utopia, the sweet spot right now for the rain. It's coming down pretty hard. You probably hear it on your rooftop and even your windows possibly. A little bit of lightning and thunder with that. Nice heavy cell moving right through Utopia. This is a good soaker. Right, that's all it is. Not talking about anything severe. No hail associated with any of these storm cells that we have out there. On the northern end of Eagle Pass here and throughout other portions of Maverick County as you go northeastward, that's where we have other thunderstorm activity. Again, this is all garden variety, non-severe thunderstorms. Just good heavy rainfall and some lightning and thunder. And actually, this is the part of Texas where we need rain the absolute most at this time. So it's nice to see this. Then we also have this line that's coming together in Mexico. Now, this is expected to continue to push eastward. And as it does so, cross over into the Maverick County, clip parts of Kinney County as well, progress eastward and then fizzle out as it heads to I-35. And we've been talking about this for a while now, and all the latest information indicates the same scenario. Basically, very similar to what we had as a couple nights ago when the line came together moved eastward and then fell apart before it could make it to San Antonio. So we're looking at 1 a.m. A line probably from parts of the hill country southward down toward Webb County. And as we progress through the night while we're sleeping, it falls apart. Some locations west of I-35 will get some good rain out of it. So somebody's going to cash in out of this. It's just not going to be everybody. Locally, I think we'll have a few showers left over around 3, 4 a.m. And maybe a few sprinkles in the morning. Whatever's left of it would be a few sprinkles east of town as we get toward the morning rush hour tomorrow. So rain chances get better. Okay, 30% on Thursday, a few pop up thunderstorms possible, but we jumped there. We bumped that up to 60% Friday and Saturday. So looking even better at that point as we have some upper support and a cold front moving into town, you're going to feel that cold front. So let's talk temperatures. We made it to 83 today. Right now we're in the 70s. 71 in Holotus, 73 Pleasanton, still hanging on to 79 in Catula and Carrizo Springs. Tomorrow afternoon is going to be similar, low 80s for Wednesday and Thursday. Boom, then the cold front hits and look what happens. By Friday and Saturday, we're looking at afternoon temperatures back down in the 50s. So this is a real deal cold front. A few sprinkles tomorrow morning, then we make it to 81. Isolated storms possible Thursday, still low 80s and humid. Then Friday comes and with that front, more numerous showers and a few thunderstorms developing. And Saturday is looking like an old fashioned rainy day where we just have gray skies, passing light rain and cool temperatures only in the 50s. So big changes to talk about. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. So we should be tracking the playoff race instead. We're checking coronavirus tests, Greg. How concerned are the Spurs about some of these recent developments? So far, we're told not so much because no one that we know of exhibiting any of the symptoms so far, which is part of the protocol of whether or not a player would be tested. But right now, after a member of the Nets, in fact, four members of the Brooklyn Nets testing positive for the COVID-19, including Kevin Durant, what the Spurs had to say about that because they played the Nets just recently. And get this, Jason Witten is no longer a cowboy, and he's not the only one coming up.
We are getting word today that as many as four members of the Brooklyn Nets are tested positive for the coronavirus, including Kevin Durant. According to The Athletic, even though Durant is still signing with a ruptures Achilles tendon, we do know the Spurs played the Nets on March the 6th in Brooklyn just five days before the season was shut down. When asked if any Spurs staff or players have been tested positive for COVID-19 or under quarantine, the Spurs tell us they don't have a statement at this time. Golden State Warriors head coach and Team USA assistant coach Steve Kerr says he's been in contact with Spurs and U.S. men's basketball team coach Greg Popovich about the upcoming Tokyo Olympics and whether or not they will be played due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Kerr says his conversation with Pop say they must plan is that the games will go on. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Shocker for the Dallas Cowboys. Jason Witten is not a Dallas Cowboy any longer after returning to the team following a one-year retirement. The 11-time Pro Bowler has signed a one-year contract to play for the Las Vegas Raiders. Witten played 16 seasons for the Cowboys before spending one season on Monday Night Football broadcast booth in 2018 before returning to play for the Cowboys in 2019. And it told us he wanted to continue to play after last season. But with a coaching change, he knew that maybe would be with another team. They signed a one one year deal that will pay Witten $4.7 million to suit up in Las Vegas. While the Dallas Cowboys have managed to hang on to their star quarterback Dak Prescott with the franchise tag and wide receiver Mari Cooper, they are losing another player and other players, I should say, to free agency. The latest of which is pass rusher Robert Quinn, who just signed a five year, $70 million contract with the Bears with $30 million guaranteed. Quinn proved his worth last year after he was traded to the Cowboys from the Dolphins, where he's able to lead Dallas with 11 and a half sacks and 22 quarterback hits to go along with his two forced fumbles in 14 games last season. After spending just a few hours as a free agent on Monday, Dallas Cowboys have signed wide receiver Amari Cooper to a five-year $100 million contract, $60 million guaranteed. That deal went down after they used the franchise tag to keep Dak Prescott. The first time in Cowboys history, the tag has actually been used on a quarterback. In order to make the deal, the Cowboys had to rework the contracts of both Ezekiel Elliott and Leo Collins. At the same time, the Cowboys have lost slot receiver Randall Cobb to the Houston Texans for a three-year $27 million deal. That's after the Texans trade a star wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins to Arizona for running back David Johnson. Here's what Hopkins had to say and replied this on social media. The Texans organization served me well. The city of Houston served me well and my teammates served me well. The city of Houston will be forever lo be loved. Now it's time to bring a championship to AZ Hop out. And as expected, the Dallas Cowboys lost cornerback Byron Jones to free agency. That's after he signed a five-year contract with the Miami Dolphins worth more than eight Eighty-two and a half million dollars, with fifty-seven million guaranteed, making him the highest-paid cornerback in NFL history. A very high price to pay for a defensive back who only had two career interceptions and none since 2017. The Cowboys made him a first-round draft pick back in 2015. The Dallas Cowboys are keeping Sean Lee after the star linebacker agreed to return for his 11th season in Dallas by signing a one-year extension worth four and a half million dollars, with two million fully guaranteed. After 20 years in New England and a record six Super Bowl titles. Tom Brady announced today he will not be returning to the Patriots as now signed to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for $30 million a season, according to ESPN. 42-year-old took to social media today to announce the end of his run in New England that also included four Super Bowl MVP awards, 15 Super Bowl records, 13 conference title game appearances, nine conference championships, and also record 17 division championships. The decision by Brady came after meeting with team owner Robert Kraft at his home last night, and here's what he said in part. How do I possibly sum up the depth of my gratitude to Tom Brady for what he has given us these past 20 years or the sadness I feel knowing it's ending. I love Tom like a son and I always will. He has brought much happiness to me personally and to all of our fans. While sad today, the overwhelming feeling I have is appreciation for his countless contributions to our team and community. We have found one sport still in full swing. <laughs> Next. The University Interscholastic League, which governs high school sports and activities in the Lone Star State, has extended its suspension on competition until March 29th to now include practices and use of facilities. You may remember the UIL suspended the state high school boys basketball tournament at the Alamo Dome last week, right in the middle of the competition, but now has told schools that because of the coronavirus concerns, practices that include spring football and use of gyms and open weight rooms are off limits until further notice. Now, one thing that is open right now are golf courses. We checked with Brackenridge Golf Course this afternoon, found that the golfers were still enjoying the game. Everyone keeps a safe distance from one another. Uh, it's the perfect opportunity to socially disengage from your normal crowd. Uh, we're seeing fewer crowds inside the clubhouse, of course, a uh, lot less uh, handshakes after the round. Uh, people are certainly being more cautious uh, when they're around, around other people on the golf course. But uh, yeah, they're still out there playing and it's been very positive. 
And if you play golf with Steve and I, you won't have a problem about the social <laughs> yeah. distance. Yeah. We'll be in the weeds looking yeah. for our balls. Yes. I, <laughs> I see Greg at the beginning and the end of the round. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Sure. We'll be right back. That does it for the night beat. Don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts at 4.30. Good night. Nightline's next.